The top 1% of U.S. households hold 15 times more wealth than the bottom 50% combined. By wealth, class, and status, the lines that separate Americans have always been blurry. Many households rely more on gut instinct than hard data to determine where they fall on the income scale. According to the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances, as of the year 2021, the median net worth of all American households was $120,000. Based on how the U.S. Census Bureau presents this information, we'll divide America into five income groups in this video. The lower middle class makes up the bottom 20%, the official middle class comprises the next 20%, the upper middle class comprises the next 20%, and the rich constitute the top 20%. Starting with the network of those lower brackets, we'll work our way up to the network of those top brackets. The median net worth of those in the bottom 20% is $6,330. It could seem natural from the standpoint of common sense to state, well, clearly individuals with lesser wages are going to have a lower net worth. But that's not always the case. In actuality, 40% of those with annual incomes over $100,000 live paycheck to paycheck. 53% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, earning between $50,000 and $100,000 a year but 13% are actually fighting to make ends meet, with 18% finding it difficult to pay their payments. Additionally, 72% of people making under $50,000 a year live paycheck to paycheck, and 33% have financial difficulties. It's clear from this that having a low net worth isn't always a sign of a low income. It all boils down to how one manages their own finances and how one manages expenses. Additionally, having a large amount of debt can seriously harm net worth. It might be challenging for people earning modest wages to save much money. The good news is that real median wages have improved by 6% over the past year for Americans in the lowest income tier, which is a positive development. As a result, as your income increases, so will your ability to save. A net worth of $6,000 is terribly low, regardless of income, because costs can and often do go up in times of need. It can be worthwhile to examine your finances carefully and see what you can do to expand your network. Finding strategies to increase your income or more actively attacking debt could be the answer. If you're in this scenario, it would be preferable for you to attempt and find a means to increase your overall net worth. The lower middle 20% comes next. With a median net worth of $43,760, this group is financially secure. 90% of Americans claim they are in the middle class when surveyed, according to a few researchers. There are many traits that define the middle class, but most of them boil down to discretionary income and the freedom that comes with it. Are you planning to have leftovers for dinner tonight, or are you hoping to eat somewhere else? You decide without checking your bank account because you prefer not to. Are you choosing to rent? or are you choosing to purchase a home? Yes, there are a lot of elements to consider while making this selection, but your decision is probably going to be influenced by how much money you have to spare. Are you planning on taking a trip this year as well? This represents the middle class. One researcher went on to clarify more. It provides a sense of safety and a set amount of human capital. There's a specific level of involvement in your community. You become middle class for a variety of reasons, possibilities are only limited by your ability to pay for them. Therefore, having extra cash is essential. Your decision-making is frequently restricted to meeting your wants alone. Instead of a specific income or net worth, the goals of the middle class in America are sometimes used to characterize them. For instance, it might be the desire to have a car or a house, support your child's education, and feel secure about your own health care and retirement. Even if you have a high net worth, being heavily indebted can keep you from moving into the middle class for a while because it will make it more difficult for you to purchase a home or go on vacation. We now find ourselves in the middle of the middle class. With a median net worth of $14,700, this group is financially secure. Around the time they are in their early to mid 40s, the average American tends to surpass the threshold of $100,000 in net worth. For the majority of people, accumulating a six-figure net worth will take some time, but there is no doubt that this is a big achievement. For the majority of people, it signifies a significant amount of time and commitment to saving. There's a saying that goes, when it comes to money, it's not how much you make that counts, it's how much you keep. Anyone may amass riches with discipline and sound financial habits. One may have a low income of $75,000 per year and, with wise money management, retire with millions of dollars. 
Conversely, you could earn twice as much, or perhaps more, spend every dollar you earn, and never be able to retire. Income is not a cure-all on its own. Financial habits are important. The key to creating money is to save more than you spend, which is what it ultimately comes down to. The upper middle class comes next, and the median net worth of this group is $218,000. At best, it's difficult to distinguish between the lower middle, medium, and higher middle. The middle three quintiles are frequently used to refer to the lower middle, medium, and upper middle. Additionally, you're regarded as middle class if your net worth is between $43,000 and $2 million. However, because of how broad this category is, it probably merits these subcategories. In general, senior managers, doctors, lawyers, and other white-collar professionals come to mind when we consider this upper-middle-class category. But that way of thinking usually revolves around money. From the standpoint of net worth, we can see that this category can encompass a lot more things. A person who is diligent about saving can easily fall into this category. Once again, actions rather than a precise number are perhaps a better way to define the upper-middle-class category. Do you consider it necessary to inspect the price tag when making a purchase? Most likely, you don't fit this group. Are you able to assist your kids with the cost of their college education? When should your car be upgraded? How do you decide? You might do it every few years or anytime you feel your car is no longer up to date. In general, you can basically do whatever you want, whenever you want, within reason, of course. The wealthiest 20%, with a median net worth of $688,900, makes up the final group we'll discuss. Once more, we believe it's an entirely fair sum that the vast majority of individuals could amass by careful investing, but most people don't. The average American's net worth is only $250,000 when they reach retirement age, or 65. Although it's commonly known that Americans are awful at saving, you are an exceptional saver since you're sitting here watching finance tutorials on YouTube. You could easily retire with approximately $675,000 if you were to start saving just $125 per month at the age of 20 and continue doing so until you're 65 years old and sick. Additionally, it's critical to keep in mind that as you move through these several stages, your perspectives on money will probably change. When you're struggling to make ends meet, you approach money totally differently than when you've begun to build wealth. Additionally, you have some spare income and reserves, which often translates into a feeling of comfort and ease. When you get to this point, wealth is more of a feeling of abundance. You begin to consider options other than what you can do or afford because, for the most part, all of your necessities and wants have been satisfied. Instead, you begin to consider what kind of legacy you can leave behind for your community, family, and children. In the end, there are many variables that affect how you define buying the upper, middle, and lower brackets, and focusing solely on one of them will likely leave out some important details. It likely combines elements like salary, net worth, education, family size, and some psychological ones like simply feeling secure and able to support yourself. The boundary between one bracket and the next will always exist somewhere. A formal definition is unnecessary though. These are only generic principles after all. It's your financial progress, not anyone else's, that matters most, not how you think others are doing it. This is the end of today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on bell notifications. We'll see you next time.